for this shit. Murder music. I the Hi, as well. Welcome back to the shop. And today we are going to put to bed the stupid comment. Or it's not just a comment. It, I see it in bloody um, forums. People saying comments to other people's videos. I've heard people say it aloud and nearly got a slap because of it. Or they nearly got a slap because of it. Um, two stroke, you can see by the title, two strokes are not supercharged. Naturally, as in just as a stock engine, they are not supercharged. I don't know how this has even come around. Right, so. What is supercharging? Let's just start with that. The definition of supercharging is an addition to your natural aspiration system. So natural aspiration, natural breathing, natural charging, whatever you want to call it, is what the engine does without the added component added to it. So superchargers, what we call superchargers, are mechanically driven um, charge boosters charge being the air and fuel mixture that goes into an engine this is the same across the board for two strokes four strokes it doesn't fucking matter what um why do we put why do we have turbos or turbo superchargers is because it is a supercharger it's an external device that increases the amount of air fuel mixture that enters the engine from its designated volume so to speak now Turbo is a word we use to describe a turbine that is incorporated into that design. Hence, we have turbo fans, turbo jets. They are all different types of jet engine. That's what they are known as, jet engine. Um, and the turbo, the turbo, you know, turbo fans, turbo jets. They describe the fact that it is powered by a turbine, or basically, there's a turbine in there. So, a turbo is a turbo supercharger. It is as simple as that. So that's why I can say superchargers are mechanically driven um, superchargers that basically, you know, charge is like I say, is the air fuel, super is the added bit. So when we look at a four stroke, a general four stroke um, is just a four stroke. It's an NA, it's a natural aspirated, um, nat nat you know, naturally breathing if, you, if that is a word, I'm trying to just dumb it down a bit so people understand exactly what NA means. Basically, that's as a system. It is the simplest form of that engine, of that system, as it stands. So this two-stroke, a crankcase breathing two-stroke, is the NA version. This is the NA version. If you wanted to add something to this exterior, then it would be a supercharger. You would be supercharging by adding a roots blower, you'd be supercharging by adding a scroll pump, you'd be supercharging by adding um, a, a, a oh, The name's just gone, I was trying to think about it, I was saying the other ones. The screw, the Leiden screw, or whatever it's bloody called, I can't think off the top of my head. Um, but it would be turbo supercharged if there was a turbine involved. If there's a turbine involved in there in any kind of way, we call this a you know a turbo supercharger. Turbo compound engines, where the turbine actually drives a shaft or actually basically is attached to the crankshaft directly, and we'll do a video on that. Um, turbo compound engines. The reason why it's called a turbo compound is because it's got a turbine involved. It's as simple as that. Now. Um, the piston coming down the stroke towards bottom dead centre and compressing this mixture, right, that's where people go, oh, it transfers around the transfer pot and into the cylinder. That means it's forced induction, which means it's, a t it's supercharged. No. If you take that away, the engine won't run. Where if you have a supercharged engine, it'll probably run like shit if it's been designed to have a, a supercharger in the first place. Let's take a Mercedes-Benz compressor. If you take a, a Merc compressor and you take away its supercharger, it'll run like shit, but it'll still run. And it'll only run like shit because the compression ratios have been tuned to run with that supercharger. If you take that supercharger away, take away the supercharger bit, it will basically go back to its natural state, and its natural state, it will still run. 
just like turbo engines. Turbo engines will run in their natural state. Now, with jet engines, turbine, it won't run without that turbine because that is part of it. That's why they are all called turbofan, turboprop, turbojet. It is part of the name. That's it. It's how it... That, they don't exist without them. So, is this, you know, squishing the air fuel mixture in here, is that turbocharging? Oh, no, is that supercharging, sorry? No, it's not. It's not forced induction. You might say, well, it's going in the cylinder. So it's forced induction. That's why they call it a transfer port. Fuck's sake. You know, they do not call a, a five-stroke engine where one piston pushes flow into the next cylinder. They do not call that supercharging. It behaves like a supercharger, but that's not supercharging. That is how that entire system has to work from the get-go. If you take away one cylinder, it'll run like an et another engine, but it's not a physical component that you can pull off. That's the other thing. These superchargers and turbochargers are accessories. They're additions to the engine. If it's part of the cycle, then it does. it's not an NA. You know what I mean? Um, Two-stroke diesels. Two-stroke diesels generally need either a turbo or a supercharger, a mechanically driven one, to draw in fuel and air. It is as simple as that. You know, you might say, ah, but yeah, this wouldn't work if you didn't have the piston force. It wouldn't, that's true. That's part of its natural cycle. Just like a four-stroke. If a four-stroke didn't have the four-strokes and had two strokes, it wouldn't have that stroke to draw in air. So what we're going to say, that the intake stroke of a four-stroke is supercharging, and then when you put a supercharger on it, what is it, a super supercharger? It's bollocks. You can say, well, you, let's get to the bit of can you say it's like a supercharger. No, because one, it's not outside of the engine. Number two is, the piston comes down, it pressurises the crankcase. That is giving this um, charge down here energy. You're basically translating through force, through pressure, you're giving it energy, you're compressing it. And then, as soon as this transfer port opens, it pisses straight into the cylinder and that pressure is relieved because it pisses out into the exhaust. So it's not really supercharging because you're not forcing anything into anywhere. You're actually exchanging the pressure for velocity. You're pressurising it so that it will actually move. Otherwise, if you weren't pressurising it and this volume stayed constant, it wouldn't fucking go anywhere. The next thing is, is people say, oh, but does that mean the exhaust is like a turbo? No, just because turbos use exhaust gases and just because an expansion chamber also helps with the process, that's got nothing to do with turbines. But people do say that the exhaust behaves like a supercharger. Again, complete bullshit. Now, you might think, aha, Matt, but you've got it wrong because two strokes can run without their exhaust, they just run lumpy and shit. Surely that comes under the, jury, you know, under the umbrella of what you've just said. No, the exhaust is the expansion chamber exhaust is not also not a turbocharger, supercharger, or a supercharger. The simple reason why is because let's just say that this is a hundred cc cylinder, and let's just say for argument's sake we have a hundred cc in the crankcase. You transfer this to this, so your in initial hundred cc has not grown. You're not forcing any more fuel and air into uh, the same volume. Not only that is. A lot of this gas and air pisses, and not a lot, but some of this gas and air pisses out the exhaust. It's, you know, there's nothing stopping it when the piston's down here, it expands into lower pressure regions. And because you slightly pressurise this, this and this are lower pressure. And because of the uh, cadency effect, which we'll do a demo for, um, because of the uh, combustion pulse that's just gone down out of your exhaust, because that was high pressure, it's left a lower pressure region, so it pisses out into the exhaust. The fact that your pressure wave comes back and pushes the, um, you know, your, the uh, charge that you've lost out into your exhaust, tries to push it back in and time it correctly so it can push it back in, this means that you're recovering what you've lost, not adding more into the cylinder. You know, so if this is, if this is a, a, a 100cc cylinder, like so, to supercharge that, you have to squeeze more than 100cc into that cylinder. Um, otherwise, you're not doing any kind of forced induction. You're just basically transferring. And when this transferring action happens from the crankcase to the cylinder, some of it, a percentage of it, let's say 15%, 20%, pisses out the exhaust. Now you try and push that back in, but you will never get that 20% back in. 
And if you do, this is the crazy thing, if there is a sweet spot in your rev range where your exhaust is perfectly tuned, then all of the other rev range you're losing out. So just say if your exhaust work like this, and here you're pushing in, you're pushing back in 20%, then here you're pushing back in 15%. So what then what you'd be saying is your exhaust is a supercharger that can't be bothered. It can't be asked. You know, 20% is what you've lost. So it basically is pushing in 100% of what you've lost. We'll get rid of that. And then these are all fucking like 80% or something crazy like that. This means that you've got a supercharger that's fucking lazy. It can't be bothered. You know what I mean? Um, where a roots blower supercharger or a turbo supercharger, they will give pressure pretty much all the time. It'll always be above atmospheric. Now, with turbos, mm, they've got to spool up so there is a bit of lag there. But with superchargers, they are generally designed, mechanical superchargers are generally designed to make sure you've always got more than 100% of your cylinder volume. Otherwise, there'll be no fucking point having them. I hope that makes sense to people. It is not a supercharger. It is part of its natural cycle. You take away this piston's ability to transfer the mixture from the crankcase into the cylinder, then the engine stops working. This is basically an air pump. You know, it is, this section is, a, people say engines are air pumps. No, because an air pump takes energy and then compresses air. So like a compressor, it takes energy from an electrical source or a, an, you know, a, a, an IC engine. It takes um, energy from either a fuel or electricity, and even electricity is from a fuel eventually down the road you know it takes the energy from um, some other source and puts it into the air it adds energy to the air to be able to compress it that's an air pump or a compressor an engine is the opposite it is using fuel and air to extract energy so yes petrol en uh, engine you know piston engines are very similar to um, you know your air compressor that you might have in your garage or something like that but it's it's not an air pump it's the roles are reversed it's not trying to pump air it's trying to extract energy out of fuel using air i hope that makes sense um i can see there's going to be a bit of confusion maybe i'll explain it in the best way if people don't if you don't understand you know what i mean just let me know and we'll revisit it and if you tell me which bits you don't understand hope that makes sense and i'll see you in a bit